Hi, and welcome everybody to Michael Antonio Live. And have I got a show for you tonight? You know, it keeps getting better every single day. The excitement is mounting to a crescendo that we don't even know is going to come. Because every day we think that things are calming down, nope, something else comes along. To kick it up a notch. And that's what's happening today. Now, something happened to Drew Brees. Now, Drew Brees, if you don't know, he is the NFL quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Now, he has won a Super Bowl, and he's very well-known and was very well-loved until today. And you're going to find out why he's not so lovable right now. Uh, Well, let me just say, I kind of still love the guy. I mean, I don't have a problem with him, but, you know, other people, other certain people do. So let me just go ahead and tell you this story. I'm going to tell you what happened here. He was interviewed, and the interviewer asked him what he thinks about players kneeling again when the NFL season starts. Now, you know, normally, I don't know how to even begin to broach this subject because we had this incident with these cops, and yes, they were terrible cops. They did a, they did a bad thing. Uh, it was horrible what they did. And everybody believes this, everybody knows this, and everybody has said this. But now you've got an entire community of people calling it racism, and they don't even really know if it is racism. It might just be bad cops. Let's be honest. Some cops are just bad, and they're bad to everybody. Come on, people. Now, look, I don't know that either, so we don't know the full answer. We're going to get more information as it comes in. But until it comes in, I think we should reserve judgment. But what are they doing? These people that are angry about this situation are looting, rioting, and killing other people. So essentially, for them, two wrongs do apparently make a right. Did you know that? I didn't even know that until now. I I needed to find out. These people have enlightened me beyond a level that I can even possibly imagine. It's amazing, folks. So anyway, so this this guy is asking Drew Brees what he thinks about NFL players kneeling down once again during the national anthem in these games. Now, I look at this and I say, you know what, we've already been through this. It's disrespectful to kneel before the flag. You're supposed to respect the flag, respect what it stands for. It stands for freedom, it stands for growth. Now, they can try to say, well, the systemic racism is not freedom. That's These people are under oppression. Well, i got to tell you right now, that's not true. That's a lie, okay? Because, you see, the flag stands for the perfect version of what we aim to be. So if, in fact, there is systemic racism... Guess what? The flag should be something that you respect because of that, not in spite. You should be saying, I respect you because you are pointing the way to a perfection that we have not yet reached, but to which we aspire. Okay, that's where we should be going with this. But you've got these people who, they're out of their minds. They think that by doing something crazy like this, they're going to kneel down. Now, obviously, it's not super crazy. I mean, it's not something that isn't dangerous, obviously, but it it sends a message of disrespect for the flag and for freedom and for the many, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who gave their lives so that we could be free today. It's a very disrespectful thing, in my humble opinion. And of course, when you hear hear from Drew Brees here, you're going to find out that maybe he shares that opinion. Let's find out right now. Drew Brees says, I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America or our country. Now, what is wrong with what he said? You may not agree with what he said. You might say, well, I do agree with it. I do agree with them, you know, disrespecting the flag because the flag is is tattered and torn. We don't really have freedom in this country. You know, you can say one of a million things to disagree with them. And like I said, whether I agree with you or whether I don't agree with you, it's your right to say it. I'm not going to I'm not going to begrudge you that right. And guess what? Here's the real kicker. Okay, the real bitcheroni about this. Well, you have to give Drew Brees that same respect. You have to allow him to have an opinion that is contrary to yours, and you shouldn't be trying to condescend to him and cause all these issues. But i got to tell you, I I need to find these people. 
We're going to go here on uh, Twitter, and we're going to find the people who have said some horrible things about Drew Brees. And I just thought, you know, I think it's just, um, let's go right to the page, okay? Now, it's just, um, it's amazing to me how, you know, evil people can be and angry and disrespectful to someone just based on a difference of opinion. I mean, it's amazing to me. And don't don't get me wrong; it happens on both sides. It really does. But I mean, it's just I, it's it's one of those things you never. If you take politics out of any situation, most of the time you're going to get people who pal around, who hang out, who love each other's company. They love a good conversation, and it doesn't turn into this. But all of a sudden, now you've got these people just using using their political beliefs as a as a cudgel, as it were, as a bludgeoning bat. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing, you know? So it's just amazing to me. And I don't think they even get it. I don't think they get... You know, I noticed somebody here says, you know, um, here's, here's something that, you know, Occupy Democrats came up with. And it says, you remember this, if this knee bothers you, but this one doesn't, Congrats, you're what's wrong with America today. Well, let me say this. I'm going to say this. <laughs> First of all, this right here, can you see me pointing to this? Okay, this is wrong. I don't think that America doesn't think this is right. Okay, I have a problem. This does bother me what he did. Sorry, but it does. Anybody who thinks this is not a problem is a moron. Okay, this is obviously a problem. This to me is a problem. Yeah, it's less of a problem. I think it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna put too much anger and pressure on Colin Kaepernick. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. Because yes, I don't agree with what he's doing. I think it's disrespectful. It's sending the wrong message. There's better ways to deal with the issues that you have in, than this. Okay, but, it's nothing like this. Let's not even do that. So when a when a when a group like Occupy Democrats makes little you know memes like this, I think it's ridiculous because they're really missing the point. Nobody nobody has said that this is okay. Okay, nobody. And I guarantee you, people think this is much worse than Colin Kaepernick. But that doesn't mean that I have to agree with Colin. Okay, that doesn't mean that I have to stand with him uh, in his mission. I don't agree with his mission. I think he's burning more bridges than he's building. It's very, you know, it's, it's very easy to burn a bridge, but it's very difficult to build one. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say here. You have got to learn how to build bridges and not burn them. And I don't think, I don't think Colin Kaepernick has learned how to build bridges. And don't, don't even try to come at me with, well, Drew Brees is doing it too. No. Drew Brees expressed an opinion. He thinks that it's disrespectful to take a knee. Now, let me ask you this. Did he say that it's illegal to take a knee? Did he say that he will try to get you removed from your job if you take a knee? No. I'm just saying that I don't think he, I don't think he agrees with those who take a knee. Simple as that. But I gotta tell you, some of his, I, it was amazing to me. In fact, you know, what I should do is I'm going to look up, actually, Drew Brees in, like, quotes. Because what happens is when you do this on, when you do the quote thing on Twitter, they basically show you all the bad, you know, okay, here, it's, um, they, I put Vries. That's not going to help me much. It was Vries. <laughs> so, no, seriously, they, they show you essentially what's going on with Drew Brees. So it's the whole story. And a lot of times they bring up a lot of very like famous people like Ed Reed responding to Drew Brees. Oh uh, yeah, this guy, he starts, he's basically telling him that he's uh, basically calling him, you know, a bad guy for doing this. I mean, it's just, you know, he's just calling him out. It's just, um, it's, I mean, I'm going to find somebody. I'm going to find someone here that's famous that has had some really bad things to say. Like, here's his teammate. Okay. Here's his teammate. Okay. Um, and this guy. 
let me read what he's. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you audio of what they're saying, but Malcolm Jenkins. This is what he says. He puts up. Oh, I'm tired. So he says, as I was trying to muster up the energy and find the words to address Drew Brees' comments, I recorded this video before I could post it. Drew reached out to me to discuss his point of view. All in all, I'm still posting this video because it's important for anyone who wants to consider themselves an ally to know how these words and actions affect those who you want to help. Drew's words during this interview were extremely painful to hear, and I hope he rectifies them with real actions. Now, here's the problem with this. First of all, this guy, Malcolm Jenkins... You know, no offense to the guy, but you know what? He should not have been publicly castigating his teammate. That's a bad idea, and I'll tell you why. Because when you're dealing with a team situation, this is the first surefire way to create, to create such a division within the team that you can destroy a team's chemistry and it's all over before the season even starts. And I'll say it this way. People can say, well, didn't Drew Brees do that? No. Drew Brees expressed his opinion. He doesn't think it's respectful to kneel during the National Anthem. That's all he said. He didn't come after a teammate. He didn't say anything specific about anyone. He just said, I think it's disrespectful. End of story. Now, this teammate, Malcolm Jenkins, decides to publicly try to humiliate and condescend to Drew Brees. And I'm sorry, guy, you're wrong. You should have, you should have kept this private if you have an issue with Drew. You could have kept this private, and you could have kept the team chemistry intact. In fact, I think, if you really want to be respectful, you have to remember something. Drew Brees is the de facto leader of this team. He's the gel, the glue that keeps this team together. Now, he made a comment. He expressed his opinion. And as far as I'm concerned, that's good enough. It's, it is his opinion. He's entitled to it. If the team had a problem, they should have all had it out privately. They could have had a team meeting. And they could have said, okay, Drew, what did you mean? Please clarify. And then Drew Brees could have explained himself and, and, and explained why he did it. Now, if you, even if you don't agree with what Drew Brees said, for you to publicly come out and try to condescend and humiliate your teammate is really childish. It's very childish. Right now, these guys are acting like little children. I'm sorry, but they are. They're acting like little children, you know? It's just amazing. It's just amazing, you know? And now they're saying, now, of course, Savage Boston Sports is reporting uh, that the, the New Orleans protesters are, are saying, F Drew Brees. I mean, really, these people are just... Uh, nobody anymore... Does anybody in this country... Just show of hands. Does anybody in this country have the maturity to have a just an honest disagreement without hating each other and saying, F you? Just curious. Can anybody tell me that? Because this is getting sick. People can't even disagree respectfully. It's disgusting. You know? And now listen to this guy here. Luke, who's Luke Johnson? Oh, he covered the Saints for the New Orleans Advocate. Ooh. So this guy was in the Marines. Okay, thanks for your service, Luke. But you're wrong here. Listen to this. I'm proud of my Marine Corps service, but it is largely private pride. Today is a day when I felt I needed to put it out there. Drew Brees, you spoke. Now I need you to listen. No, 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 no. No. F no. The bottom line is this. This whole situation, everything that's happening right now, this racial tension is brought to you by leftism. It's brought to you by a leftist narrative that, that sparks division. That's what it does. This is what they do. They try to spark division. There's a bad guy. And the bad guy is usually, when it's a leftist coming out, they create a bad guy. Usually the bad guy is a white guy, okay, white and conservative, okay, white, conservative, uh, patriotic, okay, that's the enemy. This is what they do. This is, they're good at it, actually. I gotta give them, I gotta give them a little bit of props there because they're pretty good at trying to make people feel crappy. That's why you got a bunch of white people kneeling down before Zod. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, look, I don't kneel before anyone except God. God the Father. Do you know why? Because God is the only one that we should be kneeling before. I don't kneel before men. I worship no man. 
And that's not a knock on any particular group of people. It's not. I will stand before you as an equal, and I will respect you as an equal. And, of course, when the little COVID situation goes away, I will shake your hand as an equal. I don't care. That's not the point. I really, to me, this whole thing about, uh, you know, about uh, this, you know, racial tension and it's it's systemic racism. Look, there. I, I'm sorry, but there's no systemic racism. It's not what they think it is. Um, you know, we are not living in the 1960s. I think I think what's happening is, you know, you have entire communities of people that are still stuck in the 60s. And I can't blame them because the left wing, the Democrats, brought them there. They put them there, and they won't let them out. They're in prison. These people are in prison, and they don't even know it. They have like a Stockholm Syndrome. They truly believe that what the Democrats are shoveling into them is good for them, but they're really shoveling crap into them. They're giving them some bad juice, okay? And they're trying to tell them that we know what's best for you. We have all the answers, and you need to hate the white man you need to not trust them. You need to, to to say in protest that this is systemic racism. It's horrible, and we need justice now. No justice, no peace. Well, the problem is you don't have any justice, but it's not because of what you think. You're being held back by the Democrat Party because you continually vote for them. Now, I want to tell you something. I, got a, I have a homework assignment for you, okay? And here's my homework assignment for you. I need you to go and find, on Twitter or wherever you can find her, find Candace Owens. She's got a lot of great stuff to say about this. She does her research. There's a lot of smart things coming out of her. Okay. Plus, you have also, I want you to go see Dinesh D'Souza. He's another one that actually has done his homework. He knows what he's talking about. Everything you're seeing today with these protests and with all of the rioting and all this terrible stuff this was all brought to you by leftist thugs leftist brainwashers they're trying to make people think that there's a racial division in this country and there's really not you have a few bad actors no that doesn't mean there's no racism of course there's racism every every group has its racists white black red hispanic you name it, it doesn't matter where you come from Every group has its racists in its ranks. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry to have to tell you that, but it's the truth, and you need to wake up to this. It's very important that you wake up to this. I just can't even believe it, you know? It's just incredible, you know? I mean, these people are just awful. These people are awful. They treat him like he's just, you know, man... Man. Now, here's, of course, Rick Scott. He used to be he used to be the governor of, of Florida, but now he's a senator out of Florida. But he says this. Even with its flaws, America still stands as a beacon of freedom and opportunity. Disrespecting the flag, the anthem, and our troops solves nothing. It simply tears us further apart. Now, that, to me, is a very eloquent way of saying what Drew Brees actually said. You know, Rick Scott has it right. He was He's simply explaining the sentiment behind what Drew Brees is saying, which is when you do these, when you disrespect that flag and America and what it stands for, what you're saying is that you're actually agreeing, okay, you are agreeing that problems will never be solved, that we're always going to have this perpetual fight on our hands. And, and you know, frankly, that's what Democrats want. It, it gives them their bread and butter. It keeps them in the money, so to speak. That's how they make their living, by forcing this division, and, and it keeps feeding their coffers. They get voters. They get, you know, these voters come in and just keep voting for it. We're going to save you. We're going to save you. And how ironic is it that Joe Biden is running, right? And he's the one saying, I will fix this problem. I will do it. Well, He's been here for over 40 years, right, in power, over 40 years, okay? He was the vice president of the United States for eight years with Barack Obama. How come they didn't solve the problem then? How come the racial division was worse during Barack Obama? Why? Why was it worse? So, 
and they still didn't solve it. Then they had eight years to solve it. Then Joe Biden was around for forty years. He didn't solve it while he was in office. He didn't even come up with anything good. But all of a sudden now he's going to magically fix this problem with dementia. By the way, he's got seven hands tied behind his back. He, the guy can't even th- put a sentence together, let alone two words. And all of a sudden he's going to fix all of our problems. Really? I just find this ironic, and I find that ironic that people follow this guy. And I'm not even talking like, this is not even an emotional plea as a conservative. I'm saying in general, just pragmatically speaking, how in the world can you look at that guy and see how he is right now, and his 40-year track record of disaster, nothing but failure, and all of a sudden now he's going to save us when he's at his worst? I just, it's pragmatically, it's a nightmare. It's a disaster. It's just horrible. It's like the Hiroshima of horrible. I can't even believe people would even consider voting for the guy. And again, not anything against the guy. I'm not saying, oh, don't vote for that evil son of a bee. No, I'm saying that he's just, it's just a terrible choice. He's not going to be able to get the job done. He's not going to do any better than Trump. And Trump, Trump has already done immensely better than most presidents in the history of America. And that's a fact. You can hate him all you want, but that's a fact. So, You've got all these people. Rick Scott, i got to be honest, Rick Scott nailed it, man. Rick Scott nailed this incredibly well. Wow. Wow. Look at this guy. Look at this stooge. He says, Mike, his name is Mike Stooge. He says, if bad, if bad timing and total lack of understanding was a person, then it shows Drew Brees as his thing. You know, come on. Come on. Let me tell you something, man. Drew Brees is an upstanding citizen of this country. He's a wonderful man. And you know what? Mr. Studes, or however you pronounce your name, come on, man. Give him, you, you're showing zero respect. And, he, you know, he's proving your point. When, he, you know, you're, I'm, I should say, you are proving his point. He is saying that, you know, kneeling before the flag is disrespectful. Well, look at you. You're willing to kneel before the flag, and look what you're doing. You're disrespecting Drew Brees. Instead of coming up with a good argument against what he says, and just saying, look, I respect your opinion, but I'm going to tell you this is why I don't think it works. Go ahead. You're on the clock. The problem is these people don't do that. These people, they want to take pot shots. They want to take pot shots and, t- and take off. It's kind of like what Rush Limbaugh used to say. He used to call these guys, he used to call the media the drive-by media. They come by and they take pot shots at you and then take off. They won't, they won't be responsible for anything after they do that. They don't want to answer you. They, they can lie right to your face. They can lie to the American public. And then when it comes out that they were liars or that they were not, you know, correct about what they said, they already moved on to the next story. So they draw, they're, they're done, you know. And of course, people just continue to believe the first lie, even though it's been disproven and debunked. This is just the way people operate, you know. That's the way they operate. It's just awful. I mean, wow. And this one guy, I think, uh, Gunnar McKay. Gunnar McKay. He is a black Southern libertarian, Atlanta lawyer, writer, lecturer, and proud father of two beautiful black princesses. All right, nice. Nice. Now, this is what he says. Would some black person, any black person, care to tell me how this is racist? And then he says, I am so tired of black people playing the victim card. And he's right. They do. They play the victim, but they just everything is, everything is is an attack. Any disagreement? Oh no, you you are just the worst, man. This is just, and then they'll condescend to you, and just they treat you like, oh, well, you know, this is awful, and you know what I mean. It's just, um, man, wow, wow, just amazing. And then of course somebody showed, if I could find it on here. I know that somebody showed a, a picture of Drew Brees kneeling in solidarity with his teammates. Now, a lot of people say, oh, see, he was kneeling during the, you know, he was kneeling for the anthem there. No, he wasn't, actually. He was actually kneeling before the anthem in solidarity with his fellow players. Because, look, Drew Brees cares about his teammates. Okay? He's a good guy. I don't understand all this vitriol. These people need to grow up. I'm sorry, you need to grow up. If you think there's a real problem in this country with racism, I can guarantee you this is not the way to solve it. By attacking your teammates, 
by uh, telling people who disagree with you that, you know, to go to hell or whatever else you're going to say to these people. That's not the way. you got to build your bridge. You can't burn it. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't build a bridge, you're never going to solve the problem because you might win. You might even win this election. You might, you know, you might steal this election away from Donald Trump and, and install, you know, Joe Mindless. You might do that, but here's the problem. You're not going to solve the problem because Joe's not going to help you because most of your community will stay in poverty because they don't teach you. They don't, they don't reveal to your community that you've been free all along. Unchain yourself. All you have to do is just get up and do something. Show positive energy. Go out there and just, just one day at a time do things. This is why Donald Trump was successful with the black community. He got some of the black votes in the last election. And guess what, guys? This time, he's going to get a ton more. He's actually, I'm going to make a prediction. I think that Donald Trump is probably going to steal, he's going to steal at least 10% of the black vote away from the Democrats. 10% of the entire population of blacks in this country will vote for Republicans this time around. Now, if that happens, i got to tell you, it's the end. There's no way Democrats can win at that point. So I, I just think that, you know, I think that, um, you know, I think that when you start talking about these types of things, obviously there's going to be, you know, there's going to be a little rancor. You're going to get taken aback because... You think that everybody's supposed to agree with you and your point of view. Oh, I, my point of view is so righteous. It's so wonderful. I care so much about everybody. The problem with that is it doesn't always work that way. You might think you're thinking the proper thing, but really you're being counterproductive. You're actually hurting people by the way you think. You have to really dig down and do research. You can't just, you can't just listen to the people who are indoctrinating you. Because I'm telling you, man, an entire Several generations of the black community have been lied to by Democrats. They've been told that they are not good enough to advance beyond the welfare state. Let's be honest. No, obviously, many black people in this country are, they're just able to overcome that Democrat, you know, uh, misinformation because they understand it. They see it. But many have not. Many have fallen prey to it because Maybe they were emotionally attached to it in some way. Maybe something very bad happened to them. Maybe they faced some racism in their life, and they thought, see, they were a see, see, see. But the problem is, just because you face racism doesn't mean the country as a whole is racist. You just happen to be one of the unlucky souls who ran into a racist, and it happens. i, I got to be honest. I'm going to tell this story now uh, in general. I'm not going to tell the specific story because it's not that important to, to everyone else. It's important to me, but that's about it. I was a victim of not only racism for my, you know, for my color, but I was also a victim based on my gender. In other words, things happen to everybody. Everybody is a victim of something because there's some group out there that doesn't like you for who you are. There are some people that just are not going to like you for who you are. And it has, there's a lot of different reasons. That's just the way life goes. You have to overcome it as an individual. There's no way that you're going to be able to change laws to make yourself a special protected group where everybody else has to bend their knee to you. That's not the way the world works, guys. You've got to be your own agent, okay, most of the time. Now, listen, there are times, yes, when you do, uh, you know, you uh, enlist help and you need it. There are times when we all need help from more than one person. That's that's a fact. But most of the time, you've got to be strong on your own, guys. You've got to be individualistic. And you've got to look at everyone else as an individual. You can't be looking at someone who is black and say, well, that man is black, so therefore i got to treat him like a certain way. No, that's not the way the world works. You look at him and say, is this a good man? Is this man productive in society? You know, we can find these things out. You may not know it from looking at him, you know, and talking to him for a few minutes. But if you, if you really get to know someone, then you're going to know. Regardless of color, regardless of creed, regardless of sexual orientation or anything else, gender, the bottom line is, once you get to know somebody over a period of time, you're going to figure out whether they're a good apple or a bad egg, okay? And that's the way it is sometimes. That's the way it is. You just have to do your research. You cannot, 
this whole concept of group think or group identity is very dangerous. Look what it's doing to us. It's tearing this country apart. So you got to tell you something about leftists, and this is true of leftists. They're very good at what they do. They know how to manipulate people and things. And they also know this. They know one principle. They know that it's very difficult to indoctrinate individuals. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's very, very difficult to break people down into their individual identities and try to indoctrinate them. That's a difficult thing because you have to actually be able to and think about this for a minute. This is very important to understand. This may be the most important part of this presentation tonight. It's very difficult to corral a bunch of individuals together. You have to use psychology on each individual. And guess what? Here's the hard part. And this is why it's difficult in management. Well, management even uses the technique of bringing people together as a group. It's tribal. They try to bring people together. Why? I'll tell you why it works. It can be a good thing when it comes to certain uh, certain uh, careers and, and jobs. It can be good for a manager to be able to bring people together in a group, as long as it's not like a political thing where you're hating other people, but just you're just using it as a as a team tool kind of a team strategy, that's different. But this is, I'm talking about leftism and politics and, in other words, the politics of how we deal with others in real life. Okay, and here's what happens. A, a political leader, if they really want to get people together, they cannot take the time. Not only does it take too long, but it's almost impossible to achieve. Because even if you achieve it with one person, by the time you get done with them and move on to the next person, somebody else might have changed them in that time, and now you got to go back and do it again. It's like putting out, it's like trying to put out fires that keep coming back, like those trick candles. You know those trick candles? Yeah, this is what's happening right now. So this is what they do. Instead of having to talk to each individual, learn that individual's psychology, because that's what you have to do. As a manager, you have to do that. Even if you do have a group concept, you've got to learn a person's uh, individual behaviors, what triggers them, what motivates them, that's important. Not everybody works the same. So as a leader, if you're trying to get everybody to think the same and motivate them in the same vein of thought, you have to group them together. You have to create group identity. Now, again, I think it does work in business, you know, in, you know, teamwork in jobs. I think it's fantastic. It can be very helpful. But when it comes to politics, this is very destructive. And this is what they do. This is what the leftists do, and they're very good. You should read Saul Alinsky. He wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. Brilliant. Evil, but brilliant. He knew how to motivate people. So here's how it works. If you try, again, if you try to go to each individual and individually kind of train them on a certain thought process, chances are one on one, they're going to, many of them will chew you up and spit you out. Or if they don't do that, they're not going to really understand what you're trying to do. It's going to take too long. You're never going to get anywhere. You're not going to have traction. So what do they do? They create group identity, and they say, you're a victim. The world is against you guys. And they just keep saying it. The world hates you guys. The world can't stand you guys. And it's easy because you got a bunch of people together. You get them all together in a room or in a stadium or on TV you get America together and you say, oh, you're victims. Oh, yeah, if you're black, you're a victim. Well, if you're gay, you're a victim. A woman, well, you are definitely a victim. You are, man, the patriarchy survives. What's the matter? I mean, this is what they're doing to people. So, when we, when we talk about this stuff, this is what they're doing, man. This is what these people are doing. They're creating group identity. And what it does is, it's it's a cult. That's what it is. It's funny how a lot of these leftists, I see Democrats telling uh, conservatives, "Oh, you drank the Kool Aid. You, you're a Trumper." And all. That. And what's funny is, this is the this, this is the difference between the conservative movement, the conservative mindset and philosophy, and the leftist mindset and philosophy. The conservative doesn't need a leader to indoctrinate them. They sometimes need a leader to implement their philosophies and their ideas to get them disseminated. Of course, that's what we are doing with Donald Trump. Trump is our 
you know, he is our source of power to get out the information and to get the job done. That's what he is. But he is not the one that has indoctrinated us into, into what we believe. We already had these beliefs. We already stood strong in what we know to be true. Okay. For forever. It's just, it is what's true is true. Okay. So we just kind of, you know, we need someone like Donald Trump that has the courage to stand up to the enemy, to stand up to the one that wants to crush our freedoms and crush our ideologies. So that's the difference. Many people in the Democrat Party, they don't, they don't even understand what they believe. They just believe they are a victim because that's what they have been told. You are a victim. And you have to, you know, and they got to blame somebody. And so whose fault is it? Well, it's Trump's fault this time because he's the king now in office, apparently, right? He's the dictator, right? He's, it's Trump. He caused all this. Or it's conservatives. They did this to you. They hate you. They want you to starve to death. They are racist. Oh, how terrible these people are. Yet most Democrats don't even understand politics in any way, shape, or form. They don't even know. They know nothing about it. They just listen to what they're told. I bet if you ask a Democrat, or actually I should say, if you ask maybe 10 Democrats, ask 10 Democrats how many branches of government we have and name them. Now, look, I'm not a genius. I don't know, you know, I don't know the names of every single senator and congressman in Washington. I don't, I, I haven't dug that deep, okay? I don't need to. But the point is, is, I mean, come on, if you don't know your three branches of government, then what are you doing even talking about politics with people? What are you doing? That's a basic concept. If you don't even know, you know, that, that it's very difficult to get a bill passed in Cong Congress, unless, of course, you cheat like the Democrats did when they, when they used the nuclear option. It was a, they used the nuclear option to get the, uh, Obamacare passed. You know, they used something that was supposed to be just for budgetary, uh, voting. They, you know, they, they, they eliminated the two-thirds majority necessity. They didn't care. They did what they needed to do. So this is what I'm saying is that you have, if they can't answer these questions and they don't know what they're talking about, then, I mean, it's it's sad, but it doesn't even matter because the the leftist leadership has brainwashed them into believing that, look, you're, just, you're a victim and we're going to save you. And that's all you need to know. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the old Catholic Church. And some of you who's Catholic can tell me this, or a former Catholic. Do they still, does, does the Catholic Church still discourage you from reading the Bible and understanding the Bible? In other words, don't bother. We'll tell you what it means. That's, that's what Democrats do to their people. Oh, don't worry about that stuff. We're just gonna, we're gonna help you not be a victim anymore. We're gonna give you some welfare money or we're gonna do whatever. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to emasculate men for you. Guess what? They're doing a pretty dang good job of that. You're doing a pretty good job. Everybody is just, uh, it's just crazy. But to show how confusing things are, talk about emasculation. They talk about, oh, toxic masculinity. It's horrible. Some guy the other day, a black man, he, f he basically made a white woman kneel before him. I mean, literally, that's what he did. So I'm over here thinking, man, you know, you know, they're over here talking about the patriarchy and toxic masculinity, yet they're so willing. These same women that will criticize a man for being toxic, she will turn around the same minute and she will kneel down before a man of color just because he told her to, because he guilted her into it. They guilt people into doing this. Let me just say this before I go. You do not bow down to any man. Do you hear me? This is not about racism. This is not about color has nothing to do with any of it. It has to do with your sovereignty as a as an individual under God. There's only one person, one entity that you bow before, and that is God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that's it. You don't bow before anyone else. Yes, you respect other people, absolutely. You need to respect people. That's true. But don't ever, I'm telling you, don't you ever bow before anyone. Do you understand that? I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And I'll be right back. Hey guys, if you want more great content from me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Come on, what are you waiting for?
So, oh, let me just get to this John Cusack over here. You know, you know that actor that, you know, I used to love his older movies when he was young, back in the 80s. And what's that one called? Uh, that one movie called Say Anything, stuff like that. He was pretty good, but he got crazy. He just went insane. Anyway, he wrote this thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, he said, GD, that sucks. And then he write, and he's got a picture, of course, Drew Brees uh, and his wife sitting with Donald Trump. Okay, and his wife. And so, uh, let's see. Somebody here, at Slim with a Rock. Let's see. At Drew Brees. Damn, Drew, after your comments, then seeing this picture, you lost a fan today, sir. Well, you know what, John? Really, John? He doesn't need you, okay, to be his fan, Johnny. Really? You're such a douche. I'm sorry, man, but I'm getting angry. It's making me angry that you can't even disagree with somebody without saying this. You lost a fan today. You know what, man, John? He doesn't need you, John. Let me tell you something, Drew Brees. I got your six, Drew. I'm here for you, buddy. I don't, I'm not even a fan of the Saints, which I probably should be on a Christian. So that, that probably would work out a lot better. I, I don't know, but yeah. But anyway, Drew, uh, that being the case, that I'm not even a fan of the team. I'm a fan of you, okay? I really appreciate uh, what you have done in your career. And I'm sure you've made mistakes, but you know what? I want you to ignore people like John Cusack. He's a hater. He is a classic hater. The guy is so incredibly insane and delusional that uh, don't even give him, don't pay him any mind, man. I got your six, buddy. All right? Man. Man, oh, man. This is just, look at these people. I knew Drew Brees was a clown. Shut up. I mean, seriously. Here's somebody named Blake. Okay, he says, let's see. Oh, this guy, Blake, he's he's a guy that says Carol Baskin fed her husband to Tigers. Wash your hands. Oh, apparently he's a Chiefs fan. That's cool. Kansas City, yeah, go Chiefs, man. They're awesome. So, you know, Blake over here says, so Drew Brees isn't allowed to have an opinion? Just because you don't agree with it doesn't mean he doesn't have the right to say it. It's First Amendment speech. And I agree with that. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Man. Wow. Wow. And look at this. Here's one. Always a patriot. I'm, i got to read some good ones. You know, it's good to get a, a balanced. You now, let's get a balanced attack here. That's always good, especially in sports. That's fantastic. So he says, hey, uh, this guy, always a patriot, says, hey, at NFL, remember when your viewing numbers dropped because of that anti-American quarterback? I do. What do you think will happen if you tolerate these attacks on Drew Brees? A man who is always going above and beyond and giving back to the community. And that's true. Drew Brees has been fantastic in the community. You know what I mean? And here's another one. Uh, Dodger Hogs, this guy. Okay. And uh, he says this. Okay. He's talking to, he's ca- he's talking to G- I think he's talking to uh, LeBron James here. Yeah. He says, King James, this man is one of the most charitable players in the NFL and you're going to diss him like that? So so apparently, hey, do you want to go and see what uh, LeBron James said? I mean, I know we shouldn't care, but come on, this is just too exciting. Let's see what LeBron James had to say about Drew Brees. Because you know what? Look, I, LeBron James is obviously a fantastic basketball player, but you know what? His political views are just extreme. You want to talk about extremity? Let's read what he has to say. You ready for this? He says, wow, man. Is it still surprising at this point? Sure isn't. You literally still don't understand why Cap was kneeling on one knee. Has absolutely nothing to do with the dis- disrespect of the flag and our soldiers, men and women who keep our land free. My father-in-law was one of those. Well, you know what, though? It is, though, because they already said that it was, okay? They did say it was about the flag, okay? There was a lot of, you know, it... it these guys are just, if, if, it's, if it's not about the flag, LeBron, I'm going to ask LeBron this question, Mr. James, Mr. Queen James. If it's not about the flag, then why are they kneeling during the national anthem and the flag? Why are they kneeling at that time? Why don't they make it about something else? Then why don't they say, just say it. Just you know, like every day when you have a post-game press conference, just make a general comment or a specific comment every time. Just say, I'm here, and I'm here to protest uh, the mistreatment. You know, I think that's okay to make a little statement if you want. That's your opinion. Go ahead and say that. But to kneel during the flag is a slap in the face to the people who served. It, it just is. 
And I don't even care about it. Look, the ones who agree with the kneeling, that's fine. They can. But there's those of us that are offended by that. I served my country, okay? LeBron, you didn't. I did. I served my country. And I want the respect of being able to have my opinion expressed without being treated like this. Okay? It's my opinion. I don't always get what I want, but I should always get my opinion expressed without being treated like you treated Mr. Breeze today. This is horrible. This is horrible. Man, it's just terrible. What a crappy thing. These people are just horrible. Horrible. They can't even let him express his opinion. So guess what, LeBron? You're a loser. Eep. Bye. I'm going to go see my notifications. So I had said earlier, I told one of the, I think I told, I think this is the one where I told the actual, his teammate here, I said, I think this is wrong for his teammate to publicly argue with Drew. Oh no, it must have been somebody else. But you know, it's just, um, it's just amazing. I don't want to belabor this anymore. I think that we have seen quite about enough, right? So I just, uh, <laughs> I just think it's funny, man. I think this is hilarious. Man. Man, oh man. Just a, It's just hilarious how these people are just so incredibly... And look at this one. I want you to really... You want to see something bad? Boy? This is my parting... This is my parting little shot here. This is horrible what they did to this poor little girl. Do you see this right here? Look. I'm going to blow this one up to show you. Somebody had their little daughter, okay, put a sign up that's pointing to her head saying privileged, and then, of course, hashtag Black Lives Matter. So they're basically trying to get, they're trying to sh make their daughter be ash ashamed of being white. I think this is why we have division. You're never, guys, I want you to hear this before I go. You are never going to get respect, never going to create togetherness if you're doing this kind of crap, if you're sh telling people they should be ashamed just for the color of their skin. That's just disgusting. No, I, 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 I utterly and wholly reject this nonsense. That's what it is. It's nonsense. Even Colonel Green over here said this is child abuse. Yep, that's what it is. It's child abuse. They're teaching their child to be ashamed just for being a certain skin color. It's disgusting. So, man, I just, I'm sorry, but it is. I... You know, I thought I could bring people together. I try to bring people together and think of them, then this kind of stuff. And then we get this. Then we get all this stuff, you know? Man. Wow. 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 Just incredible. Just incredible. I, I, I don't even know what to say. Guys, let's go back and look at the picture. I want you to tell me if you agree with this picture do you like it do you hate it tell me in the comments i do want you to i want you to remember that i need you to subscribe i need you to hit the notification bell please like the video and share it if you like it if you don't like it comment call me every name in the book i really don't care but i want you to respond for sure because this is an important this is an important uh conversation we need to have in america right now and all sides need to be heard I don't like how they tell certain people, they tell white people, well, you have to listen right now. No, everybody has to listen. Everybody gets a chance to talk, and everybody gets a chance to listen. So, you know, I'm just going to say it one more time. Drew Brees, you are a fantastic individual. I have your six. I am here to protect you, and there's millions of us. There's millions of us ready to protect you. And I think it's just terrible what they've done to you. This is a horrible thing, guys. Terrible. So before I go, I would like you to go to my website, if you dare. If you dare, go to my website, michaelantonio.biz. That's michaelantonio.biz. And that's where you can, you can find all my social media connections if you want to click on those and join me. If you didn't see me on... Uh, YouTube, you can join me on YouTube, and like I said, please like the video, comment, share, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. That's probably the most important thing. So yeah, it's important, you know, and also you can shop in my, I have a little shop, 
I got some cool stuff there, so please don't hesitate. Remember, michaelantonio.biz, and I'll see you there. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening tonight. And if you have any questions or any comments to me in general, it doesn't even have to be about this particular subject that I was talking about tonight. But if you have any questions for me, have any misgivings, whatever, please contact me, get in touch. Any way you can, go to my Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Remember, I have all the links here. If you see, I have all these things. You know, join me on Twitter, which is, you know, at Michael Antonio. Join me on, I'm, I'm on Gab. Go to Gab. Michael Antonio. You'll find me there. Uh, they call it a new one here. Was it Parlor or Parlay? However they pronounce that. Go there and join me. Guys, I'm going to talk to you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Go!